So this, this talk is going to be about some of the, specifically about stairs, but so what I'd like to do is kind of run you through how I do these stairs. I think winding stairs are one of the coolest things and as a builder. Why do winding stairs? I think primarily my feeling is because they're cool, but they work really well with tree houses. They're, they're a lot less clunky than our conventional staircases and um, this is a good example of what you're going to be looking at. This, that slide on the right is uh, the Trillium Treehouse. Um, that staircase was built before my time with Pete Nelson, and it just um, it blew me away the first time I saw it. There's something very cool about it. It's, it's very tree-dependent. It's not a ground-based staircase. The components of a stair are basically stair stringers. Some people call them uh, stair carriages or jacks. And normally you'd build a staircase with these cut stringers. But uh, a spiral stair, a winding stair, varies quite a bit from a, your traditional staircase. Typically in stairs you're working with a, a run and a rise, the, a tread and a height between treads. But in a winding staircase you're adding this uh, a radius to that, that formula. The way all of this fits together, headroom, how it's going to be supported, um, where it starts and ends, the length of the stairs. These things get a little bit tricky to figure. You can kind of get a sense of how these stringers are kind of odd and unusual. You've got an outboard stringer that has a, a one slope and an inboard stringer with a different slope. I'm trying to figure out how to uh, lay those out is really part of the, the big trick of designing these stairs. Basically here you'll see I've got um, five different sets of stringers. In the end it's just a continuous, it'll appear like a continuous spiral stairs. So you'll look down on that and you'll see this beautifully uh, symmetrical curve of stairs. Part of figuring out the radius of the stairs is figuring out uh, how those stairs need to fit in a tree. So imagine, if you will, a, a tree is an organic shape. It's not a perfect cylinder, but you want to park your stairs around something in a perfect cylinder. This is what I'm building to, is that perfect cylinder. So we're going to imagine a, a virtual cylinder around that tree. This is actually a, a model of the tree that I put in a 3D CAD, and it's fairly straight, but often you'll have a tree that has a lean to it, if this tree had a little lean, you'd need to expand your cylinder so that you, you basically capture the tree within that cylinder. That's the idea. That will be define the radius of your stairs. Here, we're looking down, you'll see this inner circle will represent that uh, virtual cylinder. Your, your tree will be somewhere in here. Now, your stairs are built around a center point of that a virtual cylinder. I've determined the, the minimum radius here. Two circles. I've got an outside radius and an inside radius, and both of those determine where I put my risers. The outside riser is basically the cord of an arc, and the inside riser is the tangent to the arc of that inside radius. But it, it worked out that the uh, each of these lines represents uh, the width of treads. So I've got four treads here per stringer set. Yeah, I want to basically I start in my design by figuring out an optimal uh, tread depth. That point in the stairs, you're holding a hand grasp on the inside of the stair, <coughs> and you're walking a line. It's 12 inches, half of your body width up, and that's your nice rise and run. 
The rise is always the same. We're using a, here, we're using a seven inch rise. That was my design parameter. It turns out this one worked well with a 10 degree arc for that stair tread. So if you can do the math here, but what I do, I'll take my plywood, I'll just snap out all those lines at 10 degrees. So I'm, I'm basically marking out pie shapes. My treehouse, in this case, it's 140 inches off the ground. So I'll need 20 stairs, right? Do the math, seven inches. I'm gonna snap out 20, um, 20 lines around this circle. The next thing we need to do is figure out the optimal uh, stringer length. It turns out four, four treads works really well. You go parallel to your stringer, back, another seven inches up, back, seven, back, up seven. Each of these widths are vary because the arc is the same, but the way that the stringer interfaces with that arc changes at each step. What we're doing here is we're cutting um, stringer templates. This is all just a method for making a plywood template to cut your, your stair treads. And so this will work with a two by 12. And the way I've designed these stairs, I've still got five or five and a half inches of, of meat left. The outboard stringer is still four steps, a two by six. That's a, still a really stout stair. In this project, it's a commercial project. So it, the code is more strict. What will happen is you'll have a deeper cut on the outboard stringer. Your stairs will turn into a, a a structurally equivalent of a two by four or less. Okay, so um, once you get these two done, the inner and the outer, that's it, you've got it. It's all the same. It's this is, the same. this is, yeah. it works really well. If you, um, if everything is, if your carpentry is correct. Right. <laughs> right. What? That's a requirement? <laughs> it's a requirement. You have to get good at this, but if you're, if you're, everything is like where it, the math works really well. Once you get that pattern, you can go to town, you can um, you can you can do this like 20 times and build right. keep winding. You can build it. That first picture was a job we did in Windville, which is like a 20 foot you know climb, and it is more than a 360. I think it's a really fun build. So yeah, that's the key to it all: getting the pattern right. <coughs> then you just start basically. You go to town, you start cutting up stringers, and you build as many as you need. Then the trick is getting them, uh, like putting them into place. Th that's the result of uh, the patterns on there. Right? You can see, you can see the difference between I've got the, the, an outside stringer pattern and an inside one. Well, Could this I one. Just is. buy the pattern from you. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Seriously, I'll buy, I'll buy. I'll buy that pattern. Like this is a graphic of the project we did at Microsoft. Where, let me just say, I start from the top to the bottom. Uh, in, the, in most cases, you'll have a platform already in place. And who says you have to start at the bottom up, right? It, there's, just, there's a compelling logic to do this from the top down. Um, with this system, I got to build some scaffolding. It's really simple. You can see here, I've got an existing uh, platform knee brace, right? What I've done in this project, we built the platform first at 140 inches off of the, our landing plane. I continue along and just uh, like get all my, my sets in place. <laughs> the trick here is to uh, get them aligned properly. So there's two big tricks I use. Um, the story pole is a little trick. This is an old carpentry trick that, in this case, I'll take a two by four and I'll mark out the height of my beam. I know the height of the beam because it's, it, each beam is basically four risers apart or 28 inches apart from the next uh, knee brace. So I know where that should be in space, right? I'm going to be 28 inches below the deck, another 28 inches for my next stringer and so on. So that story pole is, is a reference for where my stairs want to be spatially. Here's my favorite thing. We call it a clock ring. This gives me a horizontal reference for my stairs. Basically, I'm going to cut out this ring and, and have two pieces to it and put it back together 
on the bottom of my tree in the field on site. And I need to find where that ring fits. I know where, where it's supposed to end. I can plumb down from there, right? I know I have my reference for my minimum uh, radius. So I know how that relates to my inside stringer or the tangent line to that stringer. I, I can't find a center point because the tree's in the way, but this ring allows me to kind of orient that by these given, that given landmark. I use lasers to, uh, to line everything. And with my story pole, I can set my laser on, on any reference line I want from my horizontal cool. reference. I'll set a laser li chalk line, that line laser on a, I'll just line it up, I'll set it out here and line it up with that radius line. And that will give me a vertical reference. So now I've got a vertical reference for the, the, the stair intersections. This is crucial because your knee brace has to be in the right place. And the reason I'm doing all of this from the top down and, and pre-assembling my stairs and doing the knee braces later is because I find it much more accurate. If I tried to do this from the beginning and build my knee braces as I go, I just don't have a good way to do that in space and get it accurate. But so basically what we're doing is we're, put, we're parking our stairs and then drilling and installing the knee braces. I, I now I've got my laser. I know exactly where that paddle tab goes. I know exactly how to drill the paddle tab because I've got a laser line. I've got a laser reference line shooting on my auger horizontally and vertically so I can read that laser line. There's, there's a vertical and a horizontal laser. And I can drill a perfect hole that way. The knee brace, by the way, let me describe this. It's basically two parts. It's a, a beam on top and an actual brace. So to avoid confusion, I'm going to call that, I refer to that brace as the knee, right? And the top beam will be. So you can see here, I've got my stair floating in the air. I'm going to make a pattern here for my uh, paddle tab. That's basically a rip of plywood that matches my the depth of my or the width of my knee brace beam. So I go to the trouble of making a template and leveling it out. Again, I'm using a laser to make sure I have that leveled in space on site. You can use a, any level. With that pattern, I can go cut out my, my, uh, be my beam. And it, this is just such a simple and cool system. I take the pattern, I screw it onto my, my beam. I've drawn little holes in my paddle tab. I can just basically go and drill right through and have that my uh, my bolt holes placed exactly where I want them. And when I go back to put this beam in, I I can be assured that it's going to be level. This little jig, it's a couple of two by fours put together vertically on a piece of plywood, so you can drive your auger down. And rather than try and eyeball it, or haul out a drill press, in the field it takes a couple minutes to build that quick jig. These beams, um, they, re they rest on the paddle tab. They're basically, the paddle tab is a flange that sits inside that beam. And that allows the beam to kind of park itself in the center of that. These are some pics of kind of what that looks like in the field, right? I'm drilling for the bottom bracket for that, the, the actual knee. We drill for a one inch auger, and then we drill um, for the two inch uh, collar basically. That gets embedded in the tree. It gives us plenty of support on the bottom. That's the final product. And um, it's the same procedure. I, I cut a piece of plywood once I get my bracket installed down here. I want a 50 degree angled knee brace. The outboard end of that tread is wider than the board I can use. So if I have a 10 degree tread, I can take a board, maybe 48 inches, and slice it, rip it at a five degree angle, Is that right? And flip those two. So now I've got, a, I, right, if I flip them and join them, I've got a 10 degree pi. Yeah, rails are the most complicated part of this. Um, the rail you're looking at, it doesn't, um, 
have that compound curve to it. So my the innovation here is running our posts um, right off of our knee braces and interrupting the rail. So this rail, instead of following a, a curving plane, it basically follows a, a, a flat plane that represents the, um, the average plane of the stringer set. So these rails are basically, they're, they come off of a plane that's not horizontal. But one way to think about this is um, I've got an arc, right? My stringer arc is 40 degrees. And now my maximum radius is the outboard side of my stairs. That's also the outboard of the rail. I've got 40 degrees. I've got a, um, I've got a height to that arc. It's basically the center of your cord. There's a vertical line that runs, or in this case, horizontal. It runs to the, the arc. That's your height. Um, so in a climbing stair, I still have that, that 40 degree horizontal arc. But I need, um, I'm extending my cord length and keeping my height. Right, so basically what I'm doing is I'm changing the arc. Mm -hmm. So I've, basically this is a hypotenuse at this point. I've got a triangle okay. where... It's just Pythagoras? Yeah, I hope all of you know Pyth what the Pythagorean theorem is. It's and like... Intimately. I've got my cord length, that's the bottom, the run of my triangle, the run of the stairs mm -hmm. at the outboard side. Um, I know the height difference, it's four risers, 28 inches. So the hypotenuse of that is whatever it is, it's, I don't know. But that's my new cord length. Now I can take my calculator and I can plug in cord length and height and it will give me what that arc is. Turns out it's something less than 40 degrees. It's, uh, I, I'm just gonna make up a number here, 28.9 degrees. Now I can cut a template you know, I draw that 29 point, whatever it is, with the, the same cord length. And that will basically give you um, that, that curve. And That's cutting it out of like a 2 by 12 or a 2 by 10 to get the whole arc? Or? Yeah, right. This is the result, though. This, that we, this innovation with running the posts through, make it so you don't have to right. like, try and interface these things in a way or twist them.